Hello and welcome to Serial at Midnight. I'm Heath, and in this episode, we are reviewing A Clockwork Orange on the 4K Ultra HD formats. This is brand new from Warner Brothers Home Entertainment. First of all, look at this amazing art that's been chosen for this release. This is a scene from the movie, but it's been changed and warped to really give it that psychedelic... I mean, it's very in keeping with the imagery of A Clockwork Orange. Uh... If you haven't seen A Clockwork Orange, it's a hard movie to talk about because it's so many things and it is also none of these things. It is a very landmark film, Stanley Kubrick, uh, a master by any, by any measurements. This is the man that gave us Spartacus, he gave us 2001, he gave us Dr. Strangelove, The Shining, the list of achievements, Full Metal Jacket. He never repeated himself. He forged forward he went ahead he did not look back he didn't revisit things a clockwork orange is a moment in culture and time captured forever and it's challenging to discuss because it's not like well it's a you know it's like full metal jacket it's a war film or you know uh 2001 it's a space movie it, it, but it's so hard to talk about a clockwork orange because it is it's psychedelic, it's social commentary, it's satire, it's comedy, but it's also incredibly dark. It is a critique of violence, but it is also a celebration of violence. It is uh, an indictment of youth culture while also connecting us with that youth culture. Malcolm McDowell gives a tour de force performance in this. It is the, the role that he will always be remembered for as Alex. Uh, and his droogs, and uh, we are re revolted by what he does in the movie. The movie shows us how horrible he is, the crimes that he commits, the violence that he commits, the hurt that he puts out, but then we are so sympathetic to Alex later in the movie because of Kubrick's master touch and because of Malcolm McDowell's performance. It is an incredible film. It is not a movie that is easy to talk about or easy to watch. I've struggled with the movie over the years when I first saw it as a young person. It put me off so badly that uh, it, it, I wasn't that it scarred me, but I was like, you, you, I wasn't prepared for it. I had no idea what I was getting into when I saw this as a, as a teenager. Uh, but here I am all these, you know, several decades later, and I have so much respect for A Clockwork Orange. So... How does the new 4K edition of this stack up in terms, does it do justice to the legacy of this film? Well, A Clockwork Orange has never been a particularly beautiful film to look at. It's been, it was photographed, you know, a lot of, there are lots of psychedelic imagery, uh, lots of uh, color in certain scenes, but it is also fairly drab at many points. There are lots of, grays lots of clouds things like that a lot of stuff takes place at night or in dimly lit rooms so it's never been you know a showcase for look how beautiful this is and every home video representation of this going back to the dvd era i think i saw this actually on vhs side note there's a special feature on here that uses it's there's a, a couple of standard definition uh special features here that have been carried over we'll talk more about those in a second but when you see this movie in standard definition, like from VHS sources, we have come such a long way. It looks so good by comparison. But I say all that to say it's been a very visually, uh, it's never been a pretty movie. It's visually engaging, but it's not pretty. But the, uh, the restoration of this was done with the cooperation of the Kubrick estate as well as Stanley Kubrick's uh, right-hand man for you know years and years. And they have turned in this transfer. This is the official Kubrick-approved transfer. Uh, so I, I say all that to say like it's still not a beautiful movie. It's still not a showcase for what a 4K format can do. But this is the best it has ever looked. It's... 
the the colors are you know when they are there they really pop they're rich i think that's like willy wonka before it you know a couple of a couple of months ago we were talking about willy wonka and the chocolate factory also from warner brothers I think when it comes to these mainstream 4K releases from Warner Brothers, they are managing grain. Uh, this movie feels cleaner and smoother than I think in 1971, uh, you know, celebrating the 50th anniversary. Is the sticker showing up there? It's the, there we go. Uh, it, it, it feels like it's had grain management applied. But, you know, that's that's only my opinion from having watched, you know, uh, well over hundreds i guess of 4k transfers particularly you know the 60s 70s 50s too that's my soft spot that's that's my core that's what i spend most of my time watching uh movies generally aren't this smooth from from 1971 but i don't know i i can't say for sure i'm just telling you that uh the grain that i it does have grain it's not like it's been completely dnr'd um, but it does feel like maybe there's been some, they've brought it down a little bit. We also have to talk about the soundtrack because this is one of those movies that has the, you know, it's a, how do they list the soundtrack here? It's, you know, the, the surround sound, the nice surround sound soundtrack. Um, I'm looking for the specifics. The reason I wanted to talk to you guys about this is because the, uh, DTS, uh, HD master audio. I, I don't know if it's a 5.1 mix. It doesn't specify what the nice default audio is. I think it's 5.1. Anyway, DTS HD. That's what we know for a fact. Um, it also has the original, well, I say original, it has mono. A lot of times these movies don't have the original soundtrack. Uh, and I think that that can be problematic because you want... Here, here's what happened. I started watching this with the nice HD audio and I was like, this feels like it's mixed kind of strangely. Like music that should be, I feel like should be louder was like distance. So I switched over to the mono and it was like, whew, like, you know, that, that old, was it Dolby where the guy was like leaning back in his seat? The mono is, that was the way to go for me. It was so much brighter, louder. Um, it didn't have, now, that's how people saw this. This originally came to theaters with a mono soundtrack. I don't know if this is the... There's been some debate that I've been seeing in online communities about where some of these mono sources come from, if they're these surround soundtracks mixed down into one. I don't know. All I know is that the mono for me sounded way better than this the, than the multiple channel uh, stereo you know, surround sound mix. But... Uh, here's some more facts about this. We've got our we've got our digital code, so you can own this on uh, Blu-ray and 4K and digitally. Uh, here's our 4K disc. Here's the Blu-ray disc. This, to my knowledge, I don't have the previous edition. I have an earlier edition. I have the, I think it's the 2007 Blu-ray. Um, most of the same special features, but for the uh, the last edition, I guess it was the 40th anniversary edition. They released a, a it was a it was a three disc affair, and it had uh, one the the Blu-ray the first Blu-ray was the movie with a bunch of special features, legacy special features, and some new a couple of new special features with Malcolm McDowell. It also had a second disc with a couple of documentaries on it. It had Kubrick's A Life in Pictures, which is not that's as you can see this is just the first disc. I think this is actually literally the same first disc from the last Blu-ray edition of this. Uh, so it doesn't have the Kubrick documentary of life and pictures. And there was also a Malcolm McDowell documentary on there that is also not included here. Uh, but the special features that are included, it has the it has the commentary with Malcolm McDowell and historian Nick Redman. I think that goes back to the DVD. Um, uh, and on the blue, that's the only special feature on the 4K. Uh, on the Blu-ray, it's got Malcolm McDowell looks back, which is I think it's 2011. I guess for the 40th anniversary, where he's looking back on you know what he what he did, uh, turning in clock turning like clockwork. Uh, I believe those are the two that come from the 40th anniversary edition. Then carried over going way back to like 2000 era, uh, the Channel 4 BBC's I guess it's the Channel 4 documentary still ticking, the Return of Clockwork Orange, amazing documentary. Um, you would some people may be like, why would they put a standard definition documentary on a DV on a, on a Blu-ray? Because it hasn't been done better, and that's what exists is standard definitions. It's a great documentary. Uh, they talked to Sam Mendes, the director of American Beauty, and lots of other stuff. Really trying to analyze what it is about the movie that makes it so special. Uh, the feature a great Bolshevik blockos. 
uh, making a Clockwork Orange. Just the, doc, the the Channel 4 documentary is like 44 minutes. The Blockos documentary, Yar Blockos documentary is um, like 20, 24, I think is what it is, 24 minutes. Uh, so, and then the theatrical trailer. So you've got uh, several behind the scenes features. You've got the retrospective with Malcolm McDowell looking back. You've got the commentary. There was more that could have been included. Could have been included. Uh, it would have been nice to have that other disc. So if you have that Blu-ray from, I think it's from 2011, you want to hold on to it because it's got stuff that aren't included on this. But what's here is the best transfer that we've ever had of uh, a Clockwork Orange and uh, and a digital copy and the Blu-ray. I mean, <sighs> this is not. It's hard to recommend a Clockwork Orange because it's a very challenging movie. You have to recommend it to a certain kind of person. And that person needs to be at a certain point in their film journey, too. You don't, you know, you can't... If you're coming off Marvel movies, this is not the movie for you. This is a deconstruction of society, of who we are. Do we ever change? Are we capable of change? What drives the human heart? Are we just creatures of violence? Are we, uh, are we anarchic? Are we creatures of chaos? It's a wonderful movie. Tons of great filming locations. I absolutely think the world of this movie, I'm giving it a thumbs up. Love that cover art. Let me know what you think about it. Let me know what you think about the movie in general. We could spend forever talking about just the movie, what it means. Film is art. What a what an idea. Guys, thank you so much. Take care until next time. I will catch you later. Night, night.